In this video, you're gonna learn how to build a full stack mobile application with social networking features using React Native and Lens Protocol, and we're gonna be building this in only a few minutes. To get us started, let's first talk about Lens Protocol. Lens is a protocol that enables developers to easily build social applications. Lens is composed of not only a set of smart contracts, but also a very high quality developer-focused GraphQL API. Like serverless abstracts away complex backend infrastructure, Lens abstracts away complex social networking infrastructure, allowing developers to focus on building out their front-end applications, their web and their mobile apps, instead of dealing with creating, building, maintaining, scaling, and adding features to their backend infrastructure. So with Lens, there's no need to maintain or build out that backend infrastructure. That's all done for you by the Lens API team. With Lens, when you build an app on the protocol, you can inherit all the users that are existing in the user base of the apps that have already been built. So as of today, that's a little over 100,000 users and that's continuing to grow. In addition to that, you have a built-in powerful GraphQL API that gives you really high quality querying capabilities to all of the data on the protocol. So just like a database where you could hit the database with queries saying, give me all of the users that match all of these criteria, you can do that for a lot of different API calls using the Lens GraphQL API. And in addition to that, there are a set of modules that allow you to build in your own custom and complex features into different pieces of Lens protocol. So if you want to have different functionality allowing users to only follow other users based on certain criteria, you can do that. Also for collecting posts and other things as well. And in this video, we're gonna be building a mobile app using Lens Protocol, but we're also gonna be leveraging a open source framework called React Native Lens UI Kit. Now with React Native Lens UI Kit, you could think of this as abstracting away some of the common functionality that you see across many social applications. So when we think of a social application, you could think of something like TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, so on and so forth, there is actually very a lot of common patterns that you see across these applications. So most of these apps have a profile. They have a profile for yourself and they also often have a way for you to view a list of profiles of other users. You have a details page that kind of shows all the information about an individual users. You often have a list of posts of some sort. These could be videos, these could be images, they could be text. You have post details, so if you open that individual post, you might see comments or more information about that post. So when we think of this acting away kind of common functionality in a typical UI kit, might be focused on abstracting away like HTML elements. If we know the backend infrastructure is gonna be consistent across many applications, and we know the data and the schema of the data coming back, then we can actually start abstracting away common features in a social graph application. And that's what Lens React Native Lens UI Kit aims to do. So with just a couple of lines of code, you can get started with a really high quality, good looking app. And this is an example of what that might look like. And this is a profile component. The only thing you need to pass in here is either a profile or a profile ID and the UI kit takes care of everything else. So we're gonna be exploring and building out an app using this component as well as a few other components. And we're gonna to try to do that in just a few minutes. Like we're gonna, from beginning to end, build this out in only a few minutes. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get start building this app and from here, we're gonna start from a brand new Expo application, which is a React Native application built with Expo. And by default, the only things that we've installed for this example is going to be the React Native UI kit, along with the React Native SVG library and React Navigation. But we're starting from bare bones for the design and we're gonna be building out all of that in this tutorial and this video. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started writing some code. So here we have a basic Expo application running in our terminal, and we see that there is no design or any code really written so far. We just have the basic boilerplate. And if I go ahead and open up the code in my text editor, here you can see I have app.js open, and I have the package.json here showing the dependencies as being React Native Lens UI Kit, React Navigation, and a React Native SVG, and those are the main three dependencies that have been installed beyond just what an Expo project would give you off of the bat. So here in app.js, we want to go ahead and get started building out our Lens application. Now the most basic thing you could do here would be just be to import one of the components. 
So if I go to the documentation for React Native, a Lens UI kit here on the Lens Protocol GitHub, you'll see that we have a few of these components in here. We have a feed component would be a feed of posts. We have profiles, we have a bunch of different things. So we're gonna get started using this profiles component, which kind of just shows you a list of profiles. The easiest thing to do might just be to copy this code from the docs. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe just paste it here. And what I want to do is instead of rendering this view, we're just gonna render a list of profiles. And I'm leaving that open there because I want to add some props later on, but for now, if I go ahead and just go ahead and save that and refresh, then here we go. We see that we have this a list, this nice list of profiles coming back. And really all that we've done so far is just import like a single line of code. But what we want to do is add more features to this. So that's what we're gonna do next. So the next thing I might want to do would be to build out some navigation so that if we click on a post, we can get to see the post details. And in order to do that, we're going to need to bring in the navigation library that we've installed from React Navigation. So what I'm gonna basically do is go ahead and delete all this code and we're gonna go ahead and start importing some stuff. So here we're importing the navigation container and the create navigation stack container and we're creating a new nav navigation stack. And we're gonna rebuild this app component and actually VS Code, GitHub Copilot is, is actually giving me some nice stuff there to work with. And instead of const app, I might say export default function app. This is just the way I like to write my functions. And we are going to start off with just a single screen. And that first screen will just be like the profile component. And this is actually going to receive now a prop of navigation. And what we want to do is return a profiles component. So I'll go ahead and import profiles from Lens Protocol React Native Lens UI Kits. And here, we can use this home component as like the profiles component maybe. And now if this works, unless I've messed something up, we should have a nice navigation container. And I will go ahead and, oops, there it goes. Yeah, so now we have this home and maybe I'll just call this like profiles. And there we go. So we have this profiles list, which is pretty nice. So what I basically wanna do now is add an on-click handler for clicking on one of these. And to do that, we can just look at the different props that are available on profiles and see which one we want to use. So if we go to profiles, we have on follow press and on profile press. So that means for on follow press would be this, and then for on profile press would just be clicking on the profile itself. And in order to navigate, we need to have another component to navigate to. So what I might do is create a new file called profileview.js. And here we're going to have this view profile component. And this is really just bringing in this profile component if we get rid of these functions here for other press events. And that all we really need is like this line of code here where we have the profile and we're passing in the profile that's coming in through the route parameters. And I'm gonna comment this stuff out just to show you how this looks. And what we wanna do without these handlers, and what we wanna do now is import this profile view component here. And we want to create another screen here. And I'll pass in this profile uh, view component. And what we can now do is have an on profile press handler. And this on profile press handler will just be passed in as a prop to this profiles component. And what we're basically saying here is when we press on profile press, we're gonna be passed an argument for the profile. And then we want to call navigation 
which is passed in here as a prop, dot navigate. We're gonna be navigating to the profile component that we just defined here. And we're passing in the profile as a prop. And the prop comes through right here is the route.params. Or you could actually say this is a param, not a prop. So the param that we're passing in is a profile. So if I save the profile view and I save the updated app view, what we should be able to do now is actually click on a profile and see the details of that user's profile. And there we go. We can now see that we have the user's information about them as well as a list of their latest posts. And if we scroll all the way to the down, all the way down, we can see that we actually have pagination by default enabled, meaning that we have an infinite list of posts that we can view. And we've done all of this really without a ton of code involved. Now, there's a lot of additional features that we can add to this. So for instance, let's say that the user has been authenticated and we know that their uh, user information is a certain uh, set of data based on them signing in. We can then pass in things like their user information. So if I pass in the address of the user and then I refresh the app, then we can now see that information has been updated to show things like whether or not I'm already following a user or not, which is exactly the type of stuff that we, pro we would probably want. In addition to that, what we wanna do now is take this profile component and add additional features, because maybe we want to be able to view the people that they're following, or maybe we want to view the comments on one of their posts. So to do that, we're gonna enable a couple of other handlers here. And what we have here is an on following press handler, an on profile image press handler, and an on comment press. So when we click on the following, that's this button here, or this this like link here. The on profile image is their actual profile image in the list. And the comment would be like this. And then also you can obviously have handlers for all these other actions as well. But for now, that's what we're going to do. And in addition to that, we want to bring in the lens provider, which will allow us to pass in like global configuration to the whole app. So from React Native Lens UI Kit, in addition to profiles, we're going to import the lens provider. And here we can go ahead and pass that as the like wrapper for the entire application here. And by default, you don't really have to pass in anything. It's just going to work as you would expect. But let's say that I wanted to test this on a different network, because by default, it's on mainnet. Let's say I wanted to set the network or the environment, actually, as something like testnet. And I want to spell this wrong. And then I want to set the theme as a dark. And I go ahead and refresh that. Now we see the app is refreshed. We have our dark theme. And you also now notice that I'm not following any of these people because on testnet, I'm not really that active. But if I go back to a mainnet, then you'll see that I, if I refresh this, I'm actually following these folks. What else we might want to do, we're going to add those additional features. But what I want to pass in here, in addition to what we have already, is the theme for our navigation. Because if we have the theme here, we'll notice when we click here, this is all kind of white, but we like the dark theme. And we want to theme like different parts of our app. So I believe from here I can import like a default theme. And then I'm going to pay, create a theme called my theme that extends the default theme and just adds a background color of black. And then what I want to do for the nav navigation container is set the theme to my theme. And then now when we click on a post, you'll see that the loading spinner in the background is actually dark. So back to this, these components here. So for the on following press, we're going to be navigating to a component called view following. So we need to go ahead and create that. For the profile image press, we're going to be actually just navigating to this exact component we already have. A view profile is something we already have. Actually, we just need to name that profile. And for this one, we're going to be doing a view comment. So let's go ahead and create that. 
viewcomments.js. Immediately, like we should be able to actually click on the profile image just by adding this line of code here. So let's try that out. Boom, we have that functionality working because if I click on a profile image of a component here, then we're ready to go. Um, so for the view following, we want to view the users that person is following basically, basically is what we want to do. But to do that, we'll open view following and we'll go ahead and import that or we'll go ahead and create that, that code. So we're importing the profiles component again. We're setting the query variables or I would say the query props as the only difference from what we've done in the past. And here we're setting the name of the query to get following and the Ethereum address that comes in as the route parameters. Now, if we wonder how we got that, we can go here to view following. And within this on following press handler, we have access to the user's profile just by the nature of the library. And any data off of that profile is available. So we're using the profile that owned by property, which is the address of that user. And that is the only parameter we're passing in through the route itself, I would say. So now if we click on a user and we click on their following, oh, I actually need to add this uh, screen, I forgot. So let's go ahead and add that new view following screen. And we're gonna go ahead and set this as view following and the component is view following and we'll try that again. So we're gonna click on a user, we're gonna click on following, and then we now see all of the users that person is following. And then the last thing we wanna do is the comments. So for view comments, here we're importing the feed component from React Native Lens UI Kit and we're returning a feed, which is essentially just a list of publications. And for the property, for the prop that we're passing in, we're passing in the query name for git comments and the publication ID, which is the actual publication for the comments. And again, all of these props, all of this stuff is like documented here in the React Native Lens UI kit code base in the readme. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And what we should now have is the ability to view a user go to one of the posts that they've made or that they've mirrored and click on the comments. And again, I need to actually have that as part of our navigation. I keep forgetting to do that. So let me go ahead and import view comments from view comments. And we're gonna add one more screen to our navigation for view comments. So now if I go ahead and try this again, let's go back and click on this. We now see all the different comments for that post. And this few minutes that we've worked so far has given us quite a, few, a bit of functionality that we can get started building our custom application and we're not rewriting all this functionality from scratch. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and I hope to see you build some cool stuff with Lens. We have a lot more interesting and really helpful libraries and SDKs coming soon for Lens. So keep an eye out for that. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and share and all that stuff. And until next time, I will see you then. Thank you.